Hello everyone, Singularity here. Here's another episode of detailed analysis of improving one's gameplay. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build turrets and system upgrades so that you can be pretty OP. So here I am here, just as a point of reference, these are a bunch of Zostin ships. This is in the Galactic Center, so this is basically point, almost point zero zero. And if I zoom out here, you can see yeah, I'm pretty much in the center. As a point of reference, most ships in this area, at least for my um, for my random number generator, are around like 5,000 to 10,000 Omicron damage. If you go out just a little bit, not very far, it's still a Vorian space about over here, more like Ogonite over here. If you go out that far, ships are around 1,000 to 3,000 Omicron. As a point of reference now, for me, I'm at 30,000 Omicron. So let me show you what that looks like. So this ship here, let's activate all my turrets, we'll move in. This has 170,000 hull and uh, like 80,000 shields. Oops, and of course I crash into asteroids like always. And there you go, you can see the shields are down and he's just melting away like there's no tomorrow. And gone already, and that's a pretty high-end ship. So how do I do this? Well, it's pretty simple and that's the focus of today's video. So how this video is going to flow is first I'm going to talk about how to categorize different types of turrets and system upgrades. Then I'm going to talk about how you can get them. And then how you can build them where appropriate and how you can improve them with research stations. So let's go ahead and get started. So first off, what types are there? Well, if we bring up my build menu here and bring up the selection of turrets that I have and then check my available system upgrades. There are three things you need to know when you are selecting turrets or system upgrades. One of them is the rarity level, the other one is the type, and the last one is the material. So to rehash, the material is this here, it's iron to a Vorian. And the purpose of the game is a building game in which you start on the outer rim where there are the worst materials, so out here is iron. And as you move in, you get better materials to build better ships. And this also applies to um, turrets as well, as among other things. So down here, there'd be like titanium, and then you go to naonite and trinium, and eventually you get to xanium and ogonite, and finally you reach the core where you have a Vorian. In general, a Vorian or anything higher level is always better, better than the item before it. That's not always true, there are a few exceptions to that, but in general, titanium is better than iron, naonite is better than titanium, and so forth down to a Vorian. And this also applies to turrets. Now for turrets, what you can do is you can hover over one of these, and you can see the type of turret, I'm sorry, not the type, the material type it is. Here you can see it's an iron-based turret. There's two reasons why this is important. The first one is the material type tends to imply how powerful the turret is. This isn't always true, but it's generally true. The second reason is this determines where you can put that turret. An iron-based turret can be put on an iron block or any material type that is better. So iron can fit on iron, titanium, naonite, and all the way down to a Vorian. However, if we go, for example, to a Zanian turret, it can only be placed on a Zanian block or better, which means Zanian, Ogonite, or Avorian. And similarly, Avorian can only be placed on an Avorian type block or better. Since there's nothing better than Avorian, Avorian turrets can only be placed on Avorian blocks. The next item is rarity. Now rarity for turrets to me seems to be almost completely useless and almost irrelevant for figuring out anything in the game. The reason is because rare to level, so here you can see this is a rare turret, later on you see an uncommon and a common. You would expect that you know a rare would be better than a common and an exotic would be better than a rare. And though it sort of follows that trend line, I have seen so many exceptions, especially when you're building turrets that it's really not a good ballpark to follow. The exception to this is system upgrades. System upgrades really do follow that. So an exceptional scanner upgrade that I'm hovering over will be better than a rail. And it would definitely be better than a common or an uncommon and so forth. One thing I'll point out is some people point to the tech level of turrets. Uh, I find that to be a completely useless stat it has almost no implication whatsoever to the amount of damage you have for your turret. 
So I'll show you some examples later of turrets that I was building and how even though they all had the same tech level, the difference in damage output or effectiveness was astronomical. Now last but not least is the type. So the type is, for example, this is a repair turret, which is a type of turret, so it does certain functions. In this case, it repairs ships. This one here is a mining turret, so that type is for mining. It just mines asteroids. There's also a railgun turret, which tends to have an advantage of penetrating shields. This one's a chain gun turret, which is a general purpose uh, 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 projectile weapon, which is actually very effective even to the end game. You also see that there's laser turret types. But these different types have certain advantages, like they might be better against shields, they may be better against penetrating shields, some of them might be for more burst damage and so forth. The type for system upgrades is similar, except that it defines what it does. So in this case, this is a turret control system. So that type improves the number of turrets that you can have. This one here is a scanner upgrade, so it improves the range of your scanner, but that's a different type. This here is a generator upgrade. Again, it increases the, number, the amount of energy that you generate and the recharge rate. So that's the type. So the three items are rarity, type, and the material. Now, how do you get these? Well, there's four ways to get them. The first way is you blow up ships and you pick up the parts, which is what I was alluding to earlier when I showed the video blowing stuff up. The second one is you buy them from equipment docks. Now, equipment docks work very well, and I'll show you here a picture of that. And here is a picture of the equipment dock. You can see the little icon there, which looks kind of like a container that I guess you would pull things out of or store things in. These are available early on in the game, and they're going to sell turrets that are of a material type that are relevant to the area you are in. So if we go to the galactic map, if you were out way out here, the equipment docks are going to sell iron level turrets. And as you move in, of course, you get titanium level and so forth, because the vendors of a particular area tend to sell the resource, uh, the material type that they are in. And this is also very important for when you're building turrets, which I'll show you in just a moment. Now, this method does work, but there are a few problems with it. One is, they almost never have the weapon you want. It, they're usually not very good quality. They also cost a lot of money. There is a trick in the game for single player. I'm not sure if it works for multiplayer. But in single player, you go up to equipment dock. If it doesn't have what you want, you log out of the game and log back into the game. It will always restock for a different set of turrets, and this also applies to system upgrades. So this is a, a way to game the system, and I imagine at some point the developers will prevent this from happening. So long story short, you probably don't want to use that method, and you probably don't want to rely upon equipment docks or at any point in the game beyond when you're starting out, because you need enough turrets to get started. In general, you want to get more turrets and system upgrades from either A, blowing things up and taking it, or B, building them. So that leads me to the next two points, which is building and then upgrading via research stations. Now we're going to go ahead and build turrets. You cannot build system upgrades, you can only build turrets. So this will only apply to turrets. You can build turrets at a turret factory. You can see here by what looks like a little turret on the icon, that is a turret factory. These are very rare early on in the game, but later on, somewhere around Nanonite or Tritium space, you're going to see a lot more of them. You still won't see a huge amount of them even in the core, but there will be more of them in general, so at least you can select from the ones you want for particular stats. Now here you have a few options. One of them is the weapon type, as I described before, and the rarity. Now in general, you want to go to the top rarity when you're building these things, so I'm going to go ahead and pick ex Exceptional. I am not aware of any turret factory that's better than exceptional. As far as I know, there is none. Maybe there is, and my random number generator for this galaxy just doesn't have one. But if anyone does have one, please let me know in the comments. Last is the weapon type. Now, early on in the game, you won't see all of these weapon types. As you go deeper into the game, like deeper and deeper into the core, you should be able to see all of these. So what you can do is select one. So in this particular case, I will select the launcher. Here, I've selected it, and you can see these are the stats. So this is the damage, this is the fire rate, and the way you calculate the damage per second is you multiply the fire rate by the damage. So here the damage would be a little less than 800, because 0.8, of course, makes it less than 797. 
you can increase these stats or decrease these stats by modifying the types of parts you feed into the factory. So let me show you one little component here. Notice how there's three bonuses right here, and one of the bonuses I will classify as an anti-bonus. I'm going to increase the targeting card. And there we go. It suddenly became a secret missile. What this means is, if we fire this off, it will launch a missile, and that missile will home in on the target that we have selected. Now, just because you increase the number of parts does not actually mean the weapon will get better. So let me give you an example here. If I increase the fuel, notice how the range, which is right here, decreases. So I'm increasing the fuel. That's pretty counterintuitive. Similarly, if I increase the high pressure tubes, it decreases the range. But if I increase the number of rockets, notice how my damage, which is right here, is going up. So it's going up. And similarly, if I increase servos, it increases the fire rate, which effectively increases my overall damage because it increases the rate at which I can deliver the damage. So long story short, when you come to a turret factory, there seems to be bugs that occasionally less is better. So in this case, I'm going to decrease the number of high pressure tubes, which is great for me because it means it's cheaper for me in the long run, and decrease the amount of fuel, and suddenly my range goes way up. So this is a bug, and I expect them to filter, uh, fix it at some point. Now, I'm not going to read a spreadsheet to you for this whole video, and I'm going to make this very, very quick. You are welcome to pause the video to look at it in more detail if you so desire. This spreadsheet is just a bunch of turret factories in my general vicinity. They are all organite level, and the turrets produced are between a tech level of 45 and 46. You can see the massive discrepancies in the amount of damage and the bonus that is produced from each turret factory. Long story short, not all turret factories are created equal, even though they may be in the same region of space. So shop around, find the one that works for you, with the weapon stats that you want. Again, just take a look at this part of the video, pause it, and you can see there's a huge, huge discrepancy between different turret factories. Now the next thing I'm gonna build are the launchers. Now the launchers depend upon rockets, and there's an interesting twist to this game that I wanna warn you about. Just because you can buy something from a sector it doesn't mean it's legal to carry that item in the sector. Rockets are one of those things. So what's going to happen is I'm going to buy this, and we're just going to go ahead and buy three out of ten. And then we're going to go ahead to the new sector. And what's going to happen is, as I go there, I'm going to be spotted as carrying illegal cargo. When you enter a new sector, regardless of what you've done, uh, regardless if you've purchased it from their sector, it is in fact illegal. So they've detected that we have warheads, this is illegal, blah, 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 and they're gonna find me these credits. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do, because I don't want to get um, on their bad side, is I'm gonna comply. Thank you for your cooperation. You can see I spent the credits. Uh, and you can pretty much ignore them when they say stay still, because I'm not, because I don't wanna lose my rockets. So this is just the cost of doing business. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed out here. I paid my fine, so I won't lose, uh, uh, faction uh, uh, relations with them and then I'm going to go to the turret factory where I will build my launchers. I don't know exactly how it's triggered because when I first started doing this video I tried to trigger it by going up to a warship and it didn't work. I had to go through several warships before it eventually triggered. But uh, the thing you discover is that when you enter a new sector you really can't control where you enter in that sector. So if you get to if you get unlucky and get right next to a ship, you're going to get a big fine. And so here we are with my launchers. I'm going to go ahead and build um, a lot of them. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and build a couple. That wasn't quite as many as I wanted. I needed more servos. But still, regardless, that's quite a few of those turrets. And those are pretty powerful turrets. So now that we've built turrets, we'll now talk about how to get better system upgrades. And I'll also show you something of what you don't want to do with turrets. The best way to get system upgrades is to blow up enemy ships and pick up the debris that's left over because a lot of upgrades will usually drop from this. This is also a good way to get turrets. The turrets are not going to be as good as what you can build from a turret factory, but they're still pretty good to get you started. Later on in the game, you definitely want to go to the turret factory route if you want the top-notch turrets in the game. Now in the case of system upgrades, there is no factory that produces them, though you can buy them from equipment docks as I showed you earlier. Usually the quality is well below what you want. 
So what I do is I just blow up fleets and collect them, and then you go to a research station. Now research station, if we select this and go to research, will allow you to combine three to five items, and it will output a new item. The way it works is, if you put in five items of one t uh, rarity level, so for example, five items of exotic guarantees a 100% chance of getting a legendary item. If you only have three items of exotic, there's a 60% chance of getting a legendary, and a 40% chance of just getting another exotic. Four, of course, will produce an 80% chance of producing a legendary, while a 20% chance of producing another exotic. If you do the math, it turns out, just go ahead and put five in all the time, because after you do enough, that's what it's going to work out to being. If you're familiar with probabilities, you can go ahead and work that out, and you'll come to the same conclusion. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what you don't want to do with turrets. So let me go ahead and show this. So we'll find an exotic one. Okay, so here we have a chain gun turret. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put them in. Now look at the stats. This is approximately 2600 DPS, give or take. And that doesn't even include the 79% damage to the hole. Again, about 2600. Research. Okay, so the output of this was a new turret that's exotic that produces approximately 1000 DPS. And the stats are pretty low. If we compare that with what we put in there, that is way, way below what we put in. So we just wasted it. The, the reason for this is that when you put it into the research station, it's just a random number generator. And that random number generator is going to give you something that probably makes sense for an exotic level if it's not something you've custom built. It's just basically whatever you pick up from random drops. And that's kind of unfortunate. And just for the sake of demonstration, let's go ahead and build a legendary weapon because I've never personally seen one myself. And I would like to see one. Wow, look at that. If you look at that, that's pretty awesome. That produces a damage output of about 2377. That's almost as much damage as our exotic turret, which produce, uh, actually that's not the right one. I think, okay, there it is, the 2600 one. Now, that's really great. We have a legendary weapon that's almost as powerful as an exceptional. So this is what I was saying earlier, the rarity can sometimes be an indication of the quality of the turret. It does not actually mean the turret is better. System upgrades are different. So long story short, um, don't use research stations for this if you actually have custom built turrets. However, if you don't have custom built turrets and just picks you, you grab uh, from destroying stuff, then this might be a good way to do it. But you're never going to get stuff quite as good as the stuff you build yourself. Let's go back here and let's show you system upgrades. Now the way system upgrades work is you want to put them in of a similar rarity level and then you'll get better things out. What I normally do is for high level stuff, stuff I actually care about, so for example turrets, these are very important to me, go ahead and select five of them and research, boom, out comes an exotic. And again, that's a pretty good upgrade. Uh, again, these things, because turrets are very, very important to me, I will combine them in groups of five and make sure they're all of the same type because I want to make sure I get an exotic of the same type out. And same thing with energy to shield converters. These are very important. I combine them. Now certain things I couldn't care less about. For example, the mining facilities are pretty useless. The engine upgrades I find are pretty useless. So I just randomly combine them in different groups and whatever they happen to be, they happen to be. So again, like and even like the radar upgrades I'm not terribly impressed by in general. So we'll do something like that, and boom, out comes a mining system, which is kind of useless. And you just keep doing this. You keep combining as many as you can of the good ones that you want, and you collect them, and then you upgrade them again to the next tier. And you keep doing this until you get legendary. So before I close out this video, I'm <clears throat> going to go ahead and show you the new and upgraded ship that I've just built, that was built from these parts from this video. Uh, here I have a firepower of about 102,000 Omicron, which is pretty overpowered when the most powerful trash mobs that are meant as glass cannons only shoot at about 10,000 Omicron. 
Now, I will point out a few things on this before I close. The first one is that though you can get legendaries which are almost as good as the turrets that you can build sometimes, this is an incredible grind, it's difficult, and you're, you're putting yourself at the mercy of the random number generator. So here again, if I show you, I have a few legendaries that I built out. Not that much damage. Again, this one, one of them here, this one is actually pretty decent damage. And uh, this one here is pretty poor damage, even though it's legendary. Building your own turrets will produce the most uh, damage output, especially most reliable damage output. And you can select the type of stats you want, as long as you're willing to shop around for the right ones. Now, I will point out that building turrets is very grindy. This here is my star sector, which I have built out for the express purpose of building turrets. So here I'll, I'll show you. These are all the things I have. There are eight different space stations and three different mines. And I built this in a sector that already had existing stuff. Almost all of the, about half of the infrastructure here is mine. And I've spent quite a bit of time in this region of space just farming continuously. I, I made allies with this faction, this faction, this faction, this faction, this faction, this faction, and a little bit of this faction. All for the purpose of building the necessary components for the turrets. And this turns out to be very, very necessary. The reason it is very necessary is because the turrets have a lot of constituent parts that you have to build. And it turns out these parts are very hard to get. So here I'm coming to a, another turret factory somewhere, which is down here. And if we go ahead and open this up, I'll show you one of them where I had a problem. So if we go to launchers and exceptional. So at one point, I was trying to build this out. So I had to build a lot of factories to produce these components. But one of the ones I didn't have was rockets. So why was this a problem? Well, rockets... I could find a factory, so I found the factory, except there were no rockets. It needed microchips, fair enough, so I had to go find a microchip factory so I could sell it to the rocket factory so it could produce rockets. When I found the microchip factory, it didn't have, um, I think there were semiconductors. Fair enough. I had to then search for a semiconductor factory. I had to buy the semiconductors, bring it to the microchip factory, wait until the microchip factory can produce enough microchips, buy those, and bring it to the rocket factory. When I got to the rocket factory, I then had to sell that to it and wait for it to build the rockets and then haul the rockets to the turret factory in the first place that I wanted to build the weapon from. And this happens a lot for many of these components. Now some of the basic, basic ones like wire and fuel aren't that hard, but targeting cards, high pressure tubes and rockets, those are really hard to find. Lasers, laser compressors, laser modulator, in all the area of space that I've shown you here, there was only one laser modulator in this whole region, and it didn't have any of the mats necessary to produce it. So I wound up building a lot of my own instead. So you can do this method. I like this method. It is very satisfying when you have enough firepower to just incinerate everything in one hit, but it is a bit of a grunt. What I would recommend you do is get a list of all the components you need for building a turret when you start out early on in space, like somewhere around this area, which is the trinium or nanonite area of space. Make a list of the components you need, and as you travel to the center, pick them up and then store them. Just don't buy ones that are illegal, for example, rockets. Wait until the very end to buy those, because otherwise you're going to get fined a lot as you travel through space. Thank you everyone for watching today's video. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like button. And if you'd like to see more content, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. As then you will be notified when I release new content. Yeah, that's slightly overpowered. That was nice. Oh yeah.